Welcome, everybody, to Stay with Tam Books. Coming at you with Katie Warner, another episode of our Audio Spotlight series. Katie, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Steve. It's great to be with you. Yeah, same here. Uh, your your reputation precedes you. All I hear at the office is Katie Warner this, Katie Warner this. I didn't. I don't. I, I'm new to the program, so I, I was thinking I'm you know talking to Athanasia Snyder, Katie Warner. What's going on here? Uh, so. <laughs> that's very kind. I love the Tam team, so that's a huge blessing to hear that. <laughs> well, you're doing great work from what I understand, especially with the younger population of the Catholics. So the latest one is Lily. Is it Lolik? Lolik? Yeah, Lily Lolak. Lolak is actually a reference to John Paul II, Pope John Paul II, who was, um, that was his nickname. Really? Uh, mm -hmm. So that was kind of my homage to JP2. Throughout the whole book, we mentioned a whole bunch of different saints. And so that was the way to work uh, St. John Paul II and is right in the cover there and the main character's name. Huh. I would have never known how me being me, plus it's also being in the South. I've been like, hey, JP, or, or right. <laughs> the dude, right, exactly. or something like that. And Lolik, okay. <laughs> I know, it's kind, of, it's kind of fun to hide some of those little kind of gems throughout children's books that people may not initially pick up on. Even um, as Meg, as Meg Whalen and I have worked on, we've worked on most of them together. And she and I like to put kind of those, um, you know, in Disney term, hidden Mickeys kind of in the book. And I think it's in Father Ben Gets Ready for Mass. We have on one of the pages, a little, you know, the book binding to another book of ours, I Went to Mass. And you kind of have to really be paying attention to look for it and say, hey, I think they just, you know, I think there's another one of their children's books in there. And we, we try and do that throughout some of our books, have, you know, a child holding a different one of our books or something kind of fun to, to notice if you're really looking for it. Huh. So what, what made you do Lily? What, what, brought, well, what was the inspiration? Yeah, so Lily Lilek actually came after a um, meeting with my spiritual director. And he and I were having a conversation. And at one point, he just said very bluntly, uh, and ever so kindly, as, as his personality encapsulates so well, don't compare yourself to the saints. And so I went home that day after spiritual direction. A few days later, I was in the middle of exercising, and the whole, pretty much the whole text of Lily Lolek just started pouring out of my brain. <laughs> and so I grabbed my phone and and I'm ever so quickly like typing the entire story um, before, before I forgot it. And I, I mean, very, very much see the Holy Spirit thing. I mean, I, I, there hasn't been another book that's kind of come to me in that way, um, where it just sort of like poured out. This is the story of Lily Lilek. There was nothing that she wanted more than to love with her might and to burst with God's joy till the day she reached heaven's big door. And then I'm just like going through the text and basically uncovering this message mm -hmm. of, you know, become the saint that God wants you to be. There's so many amazing saints out there, but it can be really easy as not just children, but adults <laughs> to compare ourselves to them and to want our, to model our lives after them, not just model them, model our lives after them in terms of their holiness, mm -hmm. but in terms of kind of measuring ourselves up to what they did. Um, you know, we look at St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta and St. John Paul II and some of the saints who had a particularly huge impact on the church and on the world. And we think, how, like, we're, how, I'm never going to come close to measuring up to that, you know, especially, you know, for, for me, I think, oh, I'm, you know, a stay-at-home wife and homeschooling mom. And, you know, my, my interaction is mostly with my family every day. And, you know, I, I can, I would fall into that temptation of comparing myself to these great saints. Mm -hmm. And as Lily learns in the book, and she kind of play acts the lives of the saints as, as she goes through the book and, um, and then gets to this culminating moment where she asks, the, the priest who comes over for dinner, you know, how could my life ever be like theirs? And, um, and, and he tells her, you know, it's, it's not meant to be, you know, God made you to be your own kind of saint. And, and her excitement after that revelation just bubbles over when she realizes, I just have to be me, that God made me to be, become a saint too, but he's going to have me become a saint in a whole different way than he asked St. Joan of Arc to be, or St. Thomas Aquinas to be. And that should bring us just so much assurance and, and excitement to be able to follow our own path to sanctity. And so it was, it was neat because as I kind of reassured myself of this truth, I was able to encapsulate it into a story for children that I think has just really hit home in a fun way. Yeah, when you were saying all that, I immediately thought of Joan of Arc with, but except Therese Villazou, who wanted to go out and 
do all missionaries all over the place, but was the Savior Saint of missionaries, but never left the fortress of Carmel. Right. That view, that great photo of her dressed as Joan. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Or St. Catherine of Siena, who was kind of the opposite. She's like, please don't make me leave the contemplative life. And then she's just like, oh, I got different plans for you. And so to kind of see, you know, the more that we just fall in line with giving ourselves totally over to Jesus, the more he can do such exciting things with our life. And, um, and it was, like I said, it was just really fun to put that into a book that could teach that lesson to children. And I have young kids. So when I'm writing these books, I'm, I'm specifically writing to their age range. So I, I kind of know how I would share that message with them to begin with. And just watching this little girl come to life and to, you know, go through this realization in the book was so cool because I can read it as an adult and get so much from it. And I've, I've, I've cried several times the first time we got the copy in the mail because I just needed to hear that message over and over again. And then to watch my kids also you know be excited and enthused by that message too was just such a huge blessing i guess i'll throw the sidewinder question i don't think anybody's probably ever asked what were you working out on it wasn't burpees wasn't I know. Burpees. <laughs> How, what were you working I, out that you were I, writing down yeah, right? exactly oh, I was, I, yeah i'm pretty sure it was sometime in in bad weather because i was downstairs on the elliptical so it was a good machine to be able to type a story and exercise at the same time i really only include that note because at the time i just found i I found it so odd, like such an odd setting, such an odd moment to like have this story come into my head, which basically just reminded me that the Holy Spirit was so at work in this book from day one in, in prompting my spiritual director to remind me of that truth. And then a children's book to just come like rolling out <laughs> a few days later in response, um, which is probably due to the fact that I've been doing children's books now for a couple years. So maybe I just think in those terms now. How do I how do we share this lesson with little kids? <laughs> no, no, it's like they, the most ideas I get is when I'm doing something like that, but I just right. have no ability to write it down. I'm like, please, yes. please I know. For an hour or whatever it is. Yeah, thank you. Note that. <laughs> <laughs> well, another one brought up was uh, Pio, and that uh, you remember her, uh, somebody come up and try to tear in his cassock off, or was it or his rosary beads? And he kind of swipes at her and goes, What are you doing? Because I'm trying to get a, a relic. He goes, Make your own. I know it's so true and and just the different I mean learning about the saints lives especially for young children is it's it's such a fun activity because they can see vastly different personalities come out in the lives of the saints and and also vastly different activities I mean that Lily her sidekick in um in the book she carries around a little broom with her which um Amy Rodriguez the illustrator drew a cute little face on so my kids love pointing that out through the book they think it's super adorable but um that made me think of St. Martin de Porres and I mean he just so much of his sanctity was lived out through simple chores <laughs> and you know to, for, for children to know that, like the little things I do, just like St. Therese's little way, all those little things I do, they contribute to me becoming holy. Um, that's just such a helpful lesson to instill in young children. And again, adults, <laughs> that we everything we do can have great meaning if we offer that to God as a gift. Um, and so I, you know, since we've had the book and even any of our other children's books, we're kind of able to read them and then apply them to moments in our daily lives and refer back to the book, which I think is one of just the huge blessings of being able to do this work is to watch this, the lessons and the stories from the books and the characters from the books come to life in our everyday home life. I mean, so many of us as adults, we have books that we love and we find ourselves referencing them, you know, in regular conversations. And so it's really fun to watch my kids start to do that, you know, like, oh, hey, just like Lily Lolek or, you know, and, and reference those characters and to, and to have played a part in that is just a huge, huge blessing. Yeah, I was going to say, what's uh, some of the feedback besides your kids? Have you heard anything from other kids uh, or yeah. family? I'm sure the yes. kids aren't calling you, but family members. Right. <laughs> right. It's so fun. This book has actually been a blast to watch 
um, a lot of the people, I would say Instagram's a big format for getting feedback on the book these days. And to watch other bloggers tag me in pictures of their kids reading the book or talking about wanting to be like Lily Lolek or carrying around the book with them. I know that there's been um, some friends and bloggers who have said their kids just don't want to put the book down when it comes in the mail, which is just, I mean, what a gift to hear that. I know because like I said, you know, my children, I actually think they have more of a propensity to not be attached <laughs> because it's unfamous mommy, you know, who, who did the project. But, um, but even one of my daughters, she, I mean, it's literally requires me to read it to her multiple times a day, every day. And, um, and so just watching the reaction from my own kids, but like, like you said, from other children has been really, really neat because I can just see how the story resonates. And also Amy did such a fabulous job with the illustrations. The colors just leap off the page and all the characters in the book are just they're so adorable and everything that it just brings the story to life in mm -hmm. such a perfect way. She depicted the character Lily so well and her passion and enthusiasm that I think the art itself just draws kids to want to pick up the book. When, um, when Meg Whelan and I had started our children's book writing years ago, that was kind of our, our big aim was we wanted the Catholic children's books mm -hmm. to be as enticing as the secular ones in your home library. And for many decades, there have been great children's books and some which are as enticing, but there's also kind of a sector that are um, of children's books that are a little bit more catechetical, but, um, but less fun and engaging. And there's definitely a place for those in everyone's home library. But we wanted to kind of bring that Barnes and Noble bestseller look um, and feel to some of our Catholic children's books. So we could have that awesome catechetical content but then the fun and engaging quality that makes kids want to go run and pick up a picture book and a board book and bring it over to their parents and make them read it and reread it over and over again. What's a, I want to tell you, let's go over the story of Lily, but what's a good teaser story that uh, sticks out in your mind that was one of your best parts putting it down? Like, I love this part. Or what was your kid's favorite part of the book? Maybe okay, that, so maybe that's better. Yeah, and that's another, that's been another fun thing is watching different people mention their favorite parts of the book because for everyone it might be a little different so for mine I actually I have it sitting behind me here so I'm gonna I'm gonna open to that page but um there's a part where um Father Michael um their family priest is is telling Lily that you know she that um that she's meant to live her life like only she can um, and he says, no need to come up with a grand foolproof plan. He'll guide you and lead you through prayer and with trust to the kind of life that makes sparkles from dust. And that's my favorite line in the whole book, this idea of the, the difference between a saint and someone not striving for sanctity is the difference between sparkles and dust. <laughs> you know, God gave us our life to glorify him. And the more we glorify him, the more we can turn, you know, dirt into beauty. <laughs> and, um, and then Amy just did a beautiful illustration of Jesus behind Lily um, as she kind of blows dust into sparkles out of her hand. And so I just, I absolutely love that page and I love that line because it kind of culminates, um, it, it's sort of the climax of Father Michael's speech to Lily. And then he goes on to continue about how she's meant to, you know, dream her own dream and make her own rhyme and just learn how to best to serve him. And the whole story is told in rhyme. Mm -hmm. um, this is the first time that um, that I've done a, a very lengthy rhyming story. So it was also just fun to write because of the sing song nature of it and kind of rolls off the tongue. So um, a lot of lines get stuck in your head just because they rhyme. <laughs> uh, I'll ask because my two year old will get mad at me if I don't, even though he can't speak right now. <laughs> Is there a color book of this? Because he would, I know just looking at that, he would love to color through that. <laughs> Is there a I color? I know. Isn't that a great idea? I, I'll have to mention that to Amy to see if we can release some, release some coloring pages. Because um, Meg and I actually on our firstfaithtreasury.com site, we have some coloring pages from some of our board books mm -hmm. um, up there for people to print and download totally free. And, um, and I didn't even think about that with Lily, but you're right. There's probably enough like little Lily fans out there where they wouldn't mind being able to color a picture of her and put it up in their room or something. <laughs> he's got a little same book that a friend of ours printed out and he's all over the uh, crayons all over the thing. I mean, nice. yeah, just, <laughs> the lines don't matter. He just likes coloring. <laughs> I know, you know, it was, it was funny because when my first was born, um, my son, he just wasn't into coloring for a long time, which can be normal for first boys. They don't 
don't see anyone else coloring and between the blocks and the cars and you know it's not always the first thing they gravitate toward but then I had two girls after him and man I I have every type of coloring utensil <laughs> in this house and I'm pretty sure it occupies most of their time every day so it, it is I, I, I finally realized oh co kids coloring like that is a that is a thing <laughs> so it, it's it's always a good idea to turn things into coloring pages because they definitely get you <laughs> yeah, right now our window's got another color on it. I hope our renters isn't watching, even though right. <laughs> it'd be nice if they are, in a sense. <laughs> I know, we have, we have the window markers, too. So we get, it's actually, those come in handy around feast days. Yeah, you just yeah. decorate all the windows with the feast day, and you're like, well, that was an easy way to go about a yeah. <laughs> liturgical living. <laughs> yeah, passion time, go knock yourself out. Uh, put, put purple over everything. Yeah. I have, I have some friends who are such amazing artists, they and their kids do chalk, I mean, murals practically on the sidewalk for, they did one on Good Friday that, I mean, it was the most beautiful illustration of the crucifixion I had seen in a long time in chalk. So it's, it's just opened my, um, just opened my perspective on, on, you know, on just little kids being able to make art based off of the stories they're being told and the heroes they admire and the books they're reading. Um, it's just really fun to see that kind of bleed its way into everyday life, even into their arts and crafts and imagination in so many ways. And my kid's hose, if he has to rely on me for drawing, it's a stick man or a bus type deal for yeah. me. <laughs> I haven't graduated from that, 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 and that. It's <laughs> oh yeah, no, I have, I have none of that skill myself. I let's I say it's really the illustrators who bring these books to life because the words themselves are they can be fun, but they're flat without those beautiful pictures. And I certainly have none of that skill myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, you kind of already brought up what you want to get out of this, but yeah, I'll say we'll say it again. What kind of fruits are you looking? What were your original ones to get out of the kids for the books? You've done seven of them, I think you said, and uh, they're all obviously all of them are different. But what this particular one, what were your what was your goal for that? Besides, yeah, showing them that you know to be a saint, you don't have to be the second coming of Aquinas. It'd be good to imitate, but you don't have to be Thomas Jr. What, yeah. what was what was the is that was that like the only one? Or was there other goals involved in it? Yeah, I would say that was the main goal was communicating that God God wants you to be a saint. That's that's and it's a legitimate goal to have. I think sometimes we just feel like yeah, that's kind of a goal for the really holy people. Um, God wants you one of those really holy people, and that you can do it in the course of everyday life whatever, whatever that, you know, whatever situation you're currently in, even a child. I think sometimes my children too, it's not just, well, I don't have those gifts that the saints have. Sometimes for them, it's just my age, you know, well, I'm so little, like how could, you know, I'm not, who am I going to impact? You know, how am I supposed to be a saint? And that's when even stories like the children of Fatima, <laughs> you know, come, come in as a perfect example. And so many of St. Dominic Savio and so many other great saints mm -hmm. that were children and like, tremendously holy in their young lives but then also just the fun of learning the lives of the saints i think that was another goal um as i mentioned in the beginning of the book lily is kind of dressing up in different costumes and pretending to be different saints yeah. and so reminding our kids that the saints can be your everyday you know superheroes and movie stars kind of thing you know so um you know while a lot of kids are into, you know, Batman and Superman and all those things, which is great. My son's, you know, always got a Superman shirt on. Um, it's great to have the saints become your heroes in that same way, where you want to dress up like them and learn their stories and fight like Joan of Arc and, you know, care for creatures like Francis. Those are some of the saints um, referenced in the book to just teach them that they can bring their, those saints into their everyday lives as friends. Mm -hmm. um, who also helped them discover the saints that God made them to be. So it's, you know, you have that, that message that don't compare yourself to the saints in the sense that God wants you to become your own kind of saint, but be friends with the saints because they knew what they were doing. You know, they, they learned how to love God with all their hearts in their own unique way. And so you can make them your own friends, learn about their lives and as children play act them and just really get into their stories. Um, which help you discover ultimately the story that God has in mind for you. We're all, I think sometimes we're attracted to saints that also share things in common with us. Mm -hmm. And so being able for ch having children kind of learn which saints 
they particularly like and why, you know, or maybe it's a saint that doesn't have a lot in common with them and they want to learn to be more brave or, you know, more humble or whatever characters those saints possess. They can become intercessors for them. At the end of the book, we have a page called, called Lily's Litany. And it basically lists all of, because throughout the book, the saints are sometimes only mentioned by, mentioned by their first name. Mm -hmm. And again, for more of the flow of the rhyme than anything else. And so at the end of the book, we list all the saints' full names. Mm -hmm. um, and then along with pray for us. So the kids can pray Lily's litany at the end to learn about all the different saints mentioned in the book. And then they're encouraged to come up with their own litany. So once they learn about the lives of the saints and have their own favorite saints, they can pray these little saint litanies themselves, um, asking all of their friends in heaven to pray for them on their own journey to sanctity. Yeah, parish I used to go to uh, before I moved out this way to North Carolina was uh, a lot of other parishes in that order do it. They do the uh, all saints parties. All the kids are dressed up as saints. Yes. Stump, stump the pr uh, pastor. So there was like 50 kids all dressed up as saints and, father's got three chances to pick to figure out who they are wow you know, oh that would be hard i would have a really hard time <laughs> well the kids give them hits the kids drop the hints oh well, that's so, fun so yeah they're supposed to give them good hints to give them to try to guess oh that's really cool how do you do <laughs> oh I, mean, I don't usually stick around for the whole thing but he, he's, he's batting over 500 but oh uh, nice <laughs> yeah you got the one kid that's gonna come out as anthony it's, i you know i need help finding things or yes or, yeah exactly yeah there's right some person little in, bit. yeah <laughs> there, i know i think i think it as as my kids grow older too we look we look forward to kind of learning about more obscure saints too because they're like you said there are those saints where if you said i need help finding something or i'm gonna go care for the squirrels outside like you're kind of immediately like all right anthony and francis you know but um we we started incorporating learning about the saints just into dinner time because it was really easy we have still really little kids so they come to when, when daddy asks them what they learned in school today they're all homeschooled they're still kind of small so it's usually like a very quick and basic answer yeah. and then we turn to um we turn to learning about the lives of the saints and i usually just have my phone at the table with me mm -hmm. and i pull up an app that has a saint of the day and we get to learn a little bit about them and it's been amazing how much my husband and i have learned through doing that yeah. just i mean the treasury of saints is ginormous you couldn't begin to exhaust them and learning about some of their lives especially the saints you don't know you come across some really amazing stories mm -hmm. and and um and my so my kids have been enjoying enjoying it but probably my husband and i even more so um just just learning about saints whose lives are less popularized in the church you know in terms of devotions and and feast days and celebrations like that so who say who was one that you uh were amazed at during this oh my goodness it was funny as i was telling you that i was like uh oh he's gonna ask me for an example <laughs> of one of these that recently you know i can't so Huh. I'd struggle to, to get an exact name right for a recent one, but one that I will mention that is a popular one um, that everyone knows about is St. Patrick. But this year, we learned about some legends of St. Patrick mm -hmm. that we hadn't known before, which was also really cool. That's the other thing that I found out in us doing our regular saint study is discovering saints that are well known and things about them that are lesser well known. So. Uh, some people listening are going to be like, I already knew all those legends of St. Patrick. But, um, but one of the ones that my kids latched onto this year that they hadn't heard previously was um, the story of the altar stone when he had wanted to board a boat with an altar stone to bring to his home church. And the captain of the ship would not allow him. It must have been massively heavy. And so he threw it into the water and jumped in after it and rode the altar stone in the wake of the boat all the way back to his church where he had wanted to keep the altar stone. So it was kind of, they love that story one because they just thought how crazy he's literally sitting on a stone in the water and he made it home, you know? And of course that's one of the legends. So there's not like a whole lot of historical text to verify the story. But um, mo most of us know the driving the snakes out of Ireland story, but lesser have heard the, um, the stone story. So I would say a lot of them are those, those moments that we have where it's some obscure saint that goes hiding in the mountains, you know, to escape persecution and keeps getting found and keeps going back again um, to, you know, to saints like St. Patrick who are super well known, but have other stories about them that maybe are less obscure that when you start digging around and getting more information, the kids find are, are just really fascinating stories.
Yes, amen to that. Yeah, doing that with Dom Guerinje, but uh, yeah, no, that's that's exactly right. You, the more you read, the more you, f- little Nelly of Holy God. I remember hearing about her and going, "Wow, that was amazing," and but very well, not well known by a lot of people. Yep, or even, exactly. Or even uh, Saint Anthony, you brought up him. There's a lot of stories of Saint Anthony that are maybe the mule people don't know about or mm-hmm. um, singing to the fish. Why was he doing it to the fish? You know. Yeah. There's a whole the whole reason why he was talking to the fishies. Anyways, that's another topic we can keep on going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, no, but it's so true because sometimes you'll latch on to like the, that one famous story that you've heard, that one famous trait. Like you said, the fact that St. Anthony can help you find things, you know? And, um, and, and so also sometimes it's fun to even kind of learn about the same. Well, why is that? Why, why is St. Anthony good? All these kind of things. And so to kind of dig into their lives. And I think that's one of, one of my hopes with this story too, is that these things that are mentioned in the book, it might encourage parents and children to then say, let's go learn more about these things mm-hmm. that Lily was play acting. Cause you know, some you might know about and others you might not. There was someone who mentioned that when she's pretending to be St. Philip and she's kind of acting all silly. They thought originally that I was referencing the apostle Philip and thought, what made him silly? And I said, oh no, actually it's Philip Neary. And he was a super silly guy. <laughs> so, um, so that kind of made, you know, that particular reader excited to go and find out more about St. Philip Neary, who's a favorite of my son. There's a, 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 like an action comic book, you know, style Philip Neary book we have. And I, I feel terrible because I can't remember the author's name. I'll have to like send like post it later online or something so people can know about it. But it just, I mean, it makes him seem like both the, the, a holy priest and, the, and a total goofball at the same time, which, which my son loves because it just humanizes the saints. And um, it's, I, I love learning about saints who have tempers and other weird quirks because it just reminds you that God can work with you that in human. all of your messes, you know, and still make you a saint, which is very reassuring. <laughs> Well, Katie, appreciate your time. It's Katie Warner with Lily Lowick, and uh, we won't go through all the other titles. Just type in her name. We'll have it all underneath in the show notes section so you can get the other books. We'll have her on to talk about the other books down the road. But Katie, appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. Can't wait to be back.